Good day to all and welcome to the broadcasting unit of Sri Lankan Students Association of Broden State Medical University. I am Shani Rajshekaran, your interviewer for today. Many Sri Lankan students have shown outstanding academic performances in the spring semester of 2021-2022 academic year. Today, we would like to acknowledge and congratulate the effort of every student. Additionally, some students from each year have been invited in to share their success stories with us. The students of first year who scored brilliantly are Yogaratnam Lakshana, Maryanayika Mathushalini, Henekaralalagi SRC Bandara Sembala Pitiya, Najib Din Fatima Shara, Gamage Redmi Vandana, Disanayika Netmini Mithila, Mohammed Ramis Mohammed Shari, Namani Lakit Damsara, Vikramanata Idam Gedara Sandakelum, Yukwatagi Sasindu Pramod Pereira, Mohammed Lafir Zinat Amana, Kulupuna Dodan Godage Hasini Malshika, Ranasinga PJ, Ranasinga Arachige Pamitya Netkini. Allow me to welcome Yogaratnam Lakshana and Maria Nayakam Madhushadini. Hi, congratulations for scoring really well. I would like to ask you both a few questions on behalf of us curious Sri Lankan students. You are Lakshana and you are Madhushadini. Lakshana, could you give us a rundown of your daily routine? Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank you. So I'd like to thank you for giving us this opportunity. So if I say about my personal, my daily routine, so personally as usual, as out of the other students, I go for the classes in the morning and then uh, after the classes, especially after the classes, I just make some resting time for myself. So during my resting time, uh, I never think about my studies, what I'm going to do or something else. So I just completely rest my mind. During that time, I talk to my parents and I talk to my uh, my friends, those who are in my block, as well as my seniors, those who are in the other blocks. Uh, so then after that, uh, what I do is like, then after uh, talking to all of them, I just have my dinner or something. And then I start my studies. It will be usually like around nine or maybe 10. So then I start by that time. And then I just continue my studies. Uh, it doesn't depend like for some students like they just wanted to sleep early but for myself personally what I would do is like I just stay awake until I finish my studies for the next day. Okay, so you will study for 100% before going next day? Uh, so for some subjects actually yes like until I uh, prepare myself 100% I would do sometimes if I feel sleepy I would stop at that point and then I have a nap and then I start studying again oh what kind of nap is it like too short no not too short then? <laughs> like I I would feel better if I have a too short nap but when I go to sleep I, I fell asleep and then all of a sudden I sometimes it happens to me I all of a sudden I wake up and I'll be like, oh shit, I didn't study, I didn't study this part. I'm not prepared for the class today. What am I going to say if they question me? Then I just start studying. I don't start studying proper properly. I just refer. Mm -hmm. I just make myself comfortable to answer the answer for the question. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm not 100% thorough with it, but I should know something what yeah. is going on that day for the relevant, topic. for the relevant day, but topic. I should at least know something about the topic yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah even the question comes to me or not i should be like have a general have a general understanding so when the teacher is explaining when the teacher is asking my my friends my colleagues at least i should know like okay this is what they are talking about so then even though it's not 100% i make myself to uh, know what is going on for the day mm -hmm. daily routine if you ask me uh, during my resting time uh, I do some extracurricular activities here, like uh, I have done like dancing, sports and all. Oh, okay. So I just have kids for that time also. Like sometimes uh, when if, if there's a program coming nearby, I have practices. Like recently we had some programs and then it was a hectic time for me. Uh, so during that hectic time, I usually, sometimes I have, I, I end up the day late, the instant set the classes. The classes will be ending a bit late, so then after that I have my practices. So after going to the practices and then coming, uh, I would really sometimes feel exhausted and then I, anyways I give myself a resting time mm -hmm. and then I start. Even though it gets late, sometimes I might start my studying like around 
11, 12. But I won't stay awake. I just go through randomly what topic is about. And then I mm -hmm. so, uh, like I stay. I see. What about you, Mother Shalini? Were you active in academics back in school even as you are right now? Yes, uh, I was also active during my uh, school and also I am the best student in my school. So, uh, because of some health issues I was that prevented me to enter the medical school during my annual examination, so I came here after that. Mm, during studying, what about distractions? Did you get distracted easily? Like while you're studying, do you constantly check up on your phone? No, I'm not distracted that much because uh, I just allocate time for everything. Like uh, I do watch videos or listen to music, uh, but I have a particular time for that. So I don't think that that will distract me from studying. Like if I am, if I start studying, like I will uh, end up a time like for 50 minutes or 55 minutes, or like after that, I will uh, like watch videos for five minutes. Then I will again start. So that's not the part of distraction. Like. If I start studying, I will sit for the whole time and I will involve myself totally in studying because otherwise we can't get everything into the mind because yeah. we will get distracted and we can remember that thing and so because yeah. So in brain days I usually not watch any videos like often but in weekends I pretend to watch a movie for the weekend so <laughs> like I will watch a particular a part and I will continue it. But if I have mini exams or anything, just I stop watching movies or anything. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have been consistent in attending copy classes for human anatomy when most of your batchmates opt to not attend. Maybe because they fear that they'll crash their bed soon after attending those copy classes because you know they're tired. What's your advice to this? How do you deal with it? So, according to the question you did ask me, so personally, mm, I go, I attended most of the Gupi classes. Uh, the first, the first and foremost thing why I attended the Gupi classes was uh, our seniors are doing that, right? So the seniors, they even they have their hectic time during this their studies. So even though they have their hectic time table and all, they just advocate. They just wanted to make us. Start, not make us study but they want to make something useful for us so for the first and foremost thing I go for the classes is like as a gratitude and for, for the first day I just went for the class like I just wanted to know what is going on there so uh, okay did I didn't go for to see what's happening there just I wanted to know what is going on there inside like how do they teach us like and all and then after that for some few after the first day for few classes I continuously went. I just wanted to uh, get some more points like they're teaching like they really talk well, like the incense talk well in a sense. Uh, obviously we forget after studying, right? Yeah. So then it kept on reminding me what I meant, like whatever I forget. So yeah. then for the rest of the days I continuously went uh, to remind myself and then after that, uh, sometimes, even though I, like, as you said, like, most of my dear colleagues, they feel exhausted after the classes, uh, even though I, I do feel the same, uh, it makes me motivated to go for the classes as the gratitude. So, like, uh, I personally, I know, like, some seniors, uh, uh, some, uh, we had some classes with the fourth years and uh, third years as well. So, some of them, uh, they were... Like they didn't have the whole nights, they didn't have their sleep. They wanted to make something useful for us and they were like, they were studying what they wanted to make us revised and they wanted to make their self prepare for their next class, mm -hmm. the next day class. So they didn't sleep. So I, I just felt bad. So just think like if no one is going, just think that, um, yeah the one who is going to do the class and he came there and the organizer, those who are organizing, uh, they, are, they will be there. So just think like the, only the organizer and the person who is going to teach, if only those person will be there and if none of us are there, yeah. it's... It will break their heart. Yeah. Definitely, yes, right. So that's what I, I feel like, even though I feel exhausted and I feel like, okay, I'm not going to go today, like really, I'm, if I'm like completely tired, 
that makes me motivated to go oh, so i okay. think okay if at least if i am there at least to represent the whole batch at least one person is there right mm-hmm. just think that if no one is there it will be like completely like they would also like anyways even though they are preparing for their classes uh, obviously they prepare for their classes so they would do something for us also right so the time they allocated for us it's like completely waste for them they don't want to do that really but they make they wanted to make us something and they do that so then for the gratitude i go for that and the organizer i have seen like he usually come not usually he comes to the class every day mm-hmm. so then for that also i used to go and really like our seniors they did like they did a great job hats off to them i just really wanted to thank them i don't know whether they will like get any other chances to thank them uh i i'm sorry i'm using this opportunity yeah, to okay. thank them thank all the seniors the organizers especially and all the seniors those who did the class and those who are doing the classes uh i would thank them from my heart that's really that's completely helpful for myself and i think that it will help for my dear colleagues also like those whoever they think like uh they wanted to make something sure they can like still the classes are going on and we will have the classes also so it's like i welcome all of them yeah obviously yes like after the classes we feel exhausted and we'll be like okay we should study for the next day and if we go for that class after that we won't be able to study yeah. even i do i do feel same some for some classes i don't study also but the thing is like we know our anthony and his raj finals are coming so we should do something personally myself like uh, i don't uh, allocate specific time for anatomy and like still i i didn't allocate a specific time to start studying for the for my finals mm-hmm. so what i thought was like if i go there at least i would keep revising like something it hits my mind and i'll be like okay i have to study a lot and then mm-hmm. it starts motivating me personally it started and it motivated me a lot so personally i went for the class and i would like so really Uh, like to invite all the all not at least not all like all those who can they can come and attend the group classes yeah. definitely it would make them time, their time worthwhile right yeah and just try to uh, show some gratitude to our seniors also yeah so yeah. like they are doing for us that's very thoughtful of you lakshmi i'm sure the seniors will appreciate you comment on this um madhushali During exam season, how many hours a day do you devote to studying? Uh, uh, it depends. Like, it depends on my daily routine, and also it depends on the classes. So, if I have exam, so I will allocate my time according to like after I finish my class, I will come home and I will take a rest for because I I am usually don't take nap during the weekdays, and uh, I will start studying after half an hour after classes. Oh, like uh, because I had to my my sleeping time is really precious for me because uh, I had to sleep between twelve to twelve thirty. So before the ten days, I had to finish the next day's lesson as well as I had to study for the exams if I have exams. So I allocate my time according to that. And uh, like if I have any MCQs or like we have to study more, I will allocate my time according to like fifty MCQs per. 30 minutes so i can just read it then i can mm-hmm. understand it and i can memorize it also so i think like during exams i will study during the weekends but also if i have time in the weekdays i will try to finish it off because if i finish it before that then i can if i have free time at classes then uh, if i don't have any mini exam i usually watch some videos but if i have exams this i will try to watch videos which is useful for me for the exam Mm-hmm. So while watching videos, we can just get whatever we want because we can remember. Like if we watch a video, we can remember whatever we want rather than reading a book. So rather than reading a book, I just pretend to watch videos that's useful for me for the exam and also like uh, allocating time for each and every session. Like, do you usually give your one hundred percent to the particular topic before going to the test next day? Uh, I'll try my best, of course. But uh, even though if I didn't finish, I'll sleep because uh, I need to sleep. Uh, so I wake up in the morning like 
six if I didn't finish the topic. But uh, for me personally, uh, if I didn't study hundred percent, I can't perform well in class. Yeah. Like if I have a random idea, I can't do it because I I need everything to be perfect. Like for the next day, if I have anatomy or anything, like I have to. I have to be thorough because otherwise I can't answer to whatever they ask. So I just pretend to answer or study well before that. But if I didn't finish, I just wake up in the morning. But anyhow, I finish before the class. Okay, so that's that's nice. One subject that strains most first year students is human anatomy. Um, how do you manage to ace it while juggling with your everyday responsibilities? Do you normally start studying anatomy the day before class, or do you start in advance? That's a pretty good question to be discussed. So, like uh, myself personally, what I do is like according to my timetable, like according to my shifts and all, I just start the day before the class. Sometimes, if I have like a very huge topic, but it's more important, so if I have time, I usually do. Uh, not usually. I try my maximum to do during the weekend. If I can't, like the day before only, I do that. Mm. So during that day, like as my girl, as my friend, she said, like e- even I do the same. Like I allocate my time. Like if I wanted to rest myself, I just rest. So if I'm, if I allocate that time to talk to my parents, talk to my friends, or talk to my anyone, anyone. So during that time, I don't think about others. So what I would suggest all my friends is uh, allocate time for each and everything. So if I'm going for the classes, this this is the time I'm going for the classes, and I uh, like specifically allocate the time to come back, and then I talk to my parents and I do whatever I wanted and whatever like talking to my friends and talking to my seniors. Sometimes most of most of the times, my friends they use us some doubts. So like uh, even though that time, if I want to, if according to my timetable, like according to the time I allocated, if I wanted to start studying during that time, and if my friends they ask some doubts, I'll be like okay, they ask some doubts from me, and I like I stop my part, my studying that part, and then I just go then they go to them, or sometimes they might come to me, and then I just explain them. It might most of the time is in the anatomy part. Uh, sometimes in the other subjects also so i just explain them so what i would uh, suggest the suggest my other friends is allocate time for each and everything so sometimes like according to the allocation you can't do completely that so you might think like i have my com- yeah, yeah i have to complete the my studies during this time to this time but during that time you might get sometimes you might get distractions So you, sometimes you might be coming up with some important works to be done. Uh, you might get a call from your friend, or you might get a uh, call for seeking for help from someone. So obviously you should help, right? So we are here, and we are as the Sri Lankans, or as like it's not only the Sri Lankans, uh, na from other countries also. You might have friends, obviously yes, mm-hmm. and I do have friends from other countries too. So like whenever they call and they ask me for help during my study time. I just wanted to help them, so then I stopped that part at that time, and then I help them, and I come back, and then I start studying again. Mm-hmm. So that's all. Like even as you ask me, do you study during uh, the day before or during the weekend? Uh, I would prefer if I can do, finish it by the weekend. Like some most of the times, what happens for myself personally is like the day before the anatomy. If someone is asking for help, I just do that. So, what I uh, as the last, uh, I would conclude by here. I would suggest my friends allocate time for each and everything, and especially don't depend only on studies. You need some other uh, activities. What you should do here, we have done like other extracurricular activities, sports, dancing, music, the aesthetic activities. So, do everything. So, whatever you can, focus on everything. And especially studies. Mm-hmm. So do studies as well as to like compensate yourself. Do some other extracurricular activities yeah, to keep you going. Yeah. Um, so that's how like uh, I suggest like to do studies as well as to take part in some extracurricular activities, which obviously 
rest like uh, makes your mind peaceful and pleasant sometimes you might be like completely stressed with your studies so during that time for me personally what helped me was my extracurricular activities whatever i did like the sports as well as the aesthetic activities like dancing and all so during that time i met my uh, seniors so they just uh, make my mind calm and then they uh, give some uh, like advices mm-hmm. on studying as well as how to manage with everything and that's how it went and so focus on both not only here you came for studies obviously yes focus on studies as well as try to do some extra curricular activities that's my personal idea but i would suggest my f- yeah. friends to do and i think that's all and especially thank you for giving this opportunity to convey my thoughts with my friends uh, and uh, do you have any suggestions like uh, i would suggest to uh, make a time table like to for me personally i am preparing a time table for weekends uh, and for weekdays so that will help me to go through like if something is happening like okay we we have a rest time so in that rest time or before that if something happens we can take the time before and we can study the topic that we are in that time later thank you so much for coming here today i'm sure um, your future juniors will really appreciate when they see this video and try to take your study tips and advice thanks for great asha for us too thank you for you too. Now we shall name the top performers of the second year. Samaravira Umaya Lenagala Tahani Amaya Virasekara Kuvindu Janet Ratnavira Ket Vibushita Jayasinga Danuja Navoda Bandara Shani Prabodhini Peris Muhammad Asir Adam Satishwaran Roshika Muhammad Iftika Fatima Azra Mutugala Dona Dilmi Tarika Edema Korale Yushani Anutara I have with me today the Hani Lenagal and Danuja Jayasinka Firstly, warm congratulations. Thank you for joining us today despite your busy schedule. Um, Tahani, uh, you are known to be quite, quite multi-talented. In the last semester, you undertook many extracurricular activities. What kind of activities have you been part of? <laughs> Thank you, but I don't really think talented is the word. Uh, I think I just have this inherent need to take part in as many extracurricular activities as I can. Uh, So sports wise there was basketball, rugby, futsal, whatever sport that ended up interesting me I would just go for it. Doesn't mean I was good at it necessarily. Uh now you were a good thing. <laughs> you are. <laughs> uh other than that there was also just decorated things where if there was some sort of uh, function or um, even a university thing we have to do some sort of paper for it. Uh, then also from the university itself they would give us these opportunities to go for uh, conferences like uh, say no to drugs or um, prevention of aids uh, yeah just whatever came up i would just just go for it just because extra curricular extra curricular study um, play a very big role in my life mm-hmm. and danuja What is your opinion on doing extracurricular activities while undertaking one of the most difficult degrees in the world? So yeah, I think it's very important. I agree with Tahani. I'm not getting as involved as she is in all these student activities, but I do do my fair share of them because a, it's like it's because if you are probably studying, but I'm not one for group studying, so I study in my room alone. So when I do do these extra curricular activities i get socialized i get to make connections i get to make new friends i get to hang out with my friends so that's beneficial because especially as to relax it's very important also it gives you the balance because you always need someone for distraction from studying otherwise you get burned out and if you get burned out mm-hmm. you're not going to be productive in it so 
I think extra activities is very important. It doesn't mean physical activities, literally anything except your curriculums that you find helpful to you, I think you should do. So you're telling me taking part in many activities while having to study does not burn you out? Not really, because because if I'm just stuck studying, that is more likely to burn me out. The stress mm -hmm. will get to So me. this is one of your go to advice for yeah. preventing burning out. Okay, that's what about you? I would agree with him because I think that the likelihood of me getting burnt out is way higher if I'm just spending my entire day studying. So I think taking a break from studying is what helps me. So the break isn't always just me, you know, taking a nap or lying down and just, you know, going on Instagram or something. It's also me not studying and going for some, you know, basketball practice or something. Or, I don't know, going out for a walk. All of that would help me to not get burnt out. Mm -hmm. Um, what is your opinion on um, the community affairs? Do you think students should get more involved in community affairs? So yes, I do think uh, people should get involved in community affairs because primarily the community does so much for you. It makes life here so much easier and it's your way of giving back to the community. And because we're going to be doctors and we are supposed to serve people, it's very important that these values are instilled in us right now because then you go out and you will help your own community in your country. And yeah, th that's very important going forward. Mm -hmm. um, Tahani, do you get distracted easily while studying? Have you adopted any means to stop distraction or maybe like switching off your phones or any apps? <laughs> yes, I tend to get very distracted when I'm studying. Um, I guess switching my phone off is a no because I have like, I get really worked up if my phone is not switched on and if like no, 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 but besides the point, um, I think um, because like the way that we study now, like most of our notes and all are on like through WhatsApp or something, we would get it. So I can't really put like everything away, like you know, switch off my phone or like um, not have any social media and such. It's more I would put my phone away because what would tend to happen is I would you know, switch on my phone to get on WhatsApp and then I would end up opening Instagram or like YouTube or something and then mm -hmm. doing something there. So what I would do instead is open up WhatsApp on my laptop and physically keep my phone away. Like if I'm studying in my desk, keep it on my bed and charge it or something. Or vice versa, study on my bed, charge my phone at the table. Um, but other than that, I guess just setting little goals like like, okay, I'm going to get to the end of this paragraph and then I can have dinner or something like that. Just tiny tiny goals just so that I have something to look forward to. Yeah. On any typical day, what does your normal study environment look like? So my study environment actually changes from what subject you're studying. Because some subjects I write down and so there will be a lot of books, a lot of colour pens, a lot of highlighters to learn about. Or other times I'm just using a flashcard. So that's a very clean environment, there's nothing on the desk, like just like my laptop on the tab. And yeah, and also I don't really use a lot of textbooks exactly on the, the book itself. I use a lot of electronic versions like PDFs and so on because I made the switch around first year of uni and it's been really helpful because portability, ease of access, all of that because I tend to lose my textbooks and you know it's easy for me to just keep them at home so I won't have to pay any fines for the library once I have to return them. So I just use uh, PDFs and also you know I get to take it around to a cafe or whatever. Um, also, that's something I would do uh, for, to change my study environment. Something I did for, for example, biochemistry last year was I would get you know too cooped up in the room and would be like, no, it's too stuffy. I don't like this is not the correct study environment for me. So we used to go to a cafe and study there just for the change of environment, and that was also really helpful. Um, Tahani and Danuja, um, it must have been quite difficult juggling all of that with the workload. How did you manage to balance it with your studies? I mean, I don't think I've ever managed to balance it 50-50. I think it depends on what you prioritize on that day, depending on what you have. Like, if I have an exam coming up, then you would like you would prioritize that. If you have like a, a tournament coming up, then that day you might not study as much as you usually do, or you would, you know, read your note like 10 minutes before class just because you had to go for practice on the the evening before. Uh, I think it's just 
making sure that you get a bit of both done just so that you don't like lose out but also knowing which one to prioritize i don't think you can always make it a 50 50 balance uh i i completely agree with what you're saying but something i'd also like to add on is that it's easy to juggle things because the people you do extracurricular like activities are understand because they're doing the same thing as we are doing they understand how difficult it is so when you tell them i can't come to practice today because i have a mini exam tomorrow they be like okay we understand because they go to the same thing. so that's the thing i like to add mm-hmm. subject of biochemistry in second year is challenging please provide your tips for doing well in that subject how have you guys managed to do well in that subject <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of different things here uh, for example for structures you can have different mnemonics and little stories perhaps to how to draw the structure like i can i can't even call it it's a thing you know i but uh, that's something that i did used to do uh, was to uh, make little mnemonics about what are the essential amino acids for example to remember them in more but you know to get to the exam also something that helped was just staying in touch for the entire year because you can't cram everything in biochemistry in yeah. a semester so you have it's if you don't understand something go back to it try to get it because it becomes really difficult because in the end you realize everything links and if you're missing a link it becomes kind of difficult to understand um what i also recommend is reading uh doing some further reading watching videos taking like taking extra notes because do what it takes to understand the concepts because the very abstract concepts that you will learn for biochemistry um yeah that's what it for do you have any thoughts to share on this yeah i think from experience i can say uh, i agree with what naraj just says about like making sure that you keep in touch from the beginning itself because that's something that i didn't do so i found it a bit like when finals came up it was a bit difficult for me because i had to like i stressed out more for my biochem final because of that because i hadn't kept in touch and so even though i i feel like i am pretty good at cramming i struggled with that because it's a very like all of it is connected and so if you don't get one thing you don't get the next thing yeah so you have to keep like make sure that you understand one concept to understand the next concept so i mean since there's still like time left i think you should make sure that like you go in order and you put in like that daily work yeah you do your you do your research as well because like just cuz you're like oh, okay i can you know i'm, I'm just going to do this so that i get a 8 or a 9 for today's class that's not enough because it's going to be very difficult when it comes to the final exam that you need to actually put in the effort to understand it and even if you don't get the mark at, as such it's more about like being like ah oh, this is how it happens like this is how you know purines are synthesized and this is why this is bad like if it accumulates over like it you have to make sure that you keep in touch with it all the time because it's a very it's like a very important subject and it's also difficult if you don't understand it if not it's a very interesting nice subject yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. thank you both so much for the insightful information i'm sure most of the students will benefit from this video Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to top performers of third year, we have Muhammad Munaf, Fatima Shahika, Kularatna Tishan Lakmal, Uduman Tamina Avril, Abdul Latif Shiraza, Janaika Hishani Amanda, Ratnayika Senuri Mihisandi. Jayasurya Leonage Dona Utpala Damindri Samarasinga Samarasinga Arachi Lage Champa Tarangi Kuyatunga Isuru Sampat Samarasinga Samarasinga Arachi Lage Gimhani Kaushalya Srinivansa Kumaravadu Dulki Ruvanka I have with me today Ishan Lakman Third year is considered a difficult year by most medical students yet you did a brilliant job Congratulations So please Tishan could you give us a snippet of how you prepare your daily class work and some of the students were actually curious to know this Okay so first of all thank you so much Shani for having me today uh, yeah so yes you are correct as uh, the day is actually quite difficult semester for all of us 
uh, especially the second semester with at least five or six exams uh, one after the other. Uh, when it comes to daily classes, I think it's better to, especially for third year, my personal advice would be try to have a prior preparation as to what you're going to do because uh, like I said, there are certain subjects that will require more of your attention, like for example, pharmacology, internal diseases or something like that. And this can cause like uh, quite the jeopardy with you because there are certain subjects that require much less preparation and there might be some that require more like these subjects. So maybe during the weekends, just take a few hours, right? Take a few hours, maybe just uh, at least try to see what the whole topic consists of. Like for example, like up to like what should I study? Do I have to study a lot? Do I have to study a little? Maybe just have a pre-prepared plan for that. And that way it'll help you all to like get through because uh, some days when you have hours and hours uh, to study, you will feel like, okay, I can do this in a few a few hours. But then sometimes you all may have to engage in some extracurricular activities, or come back, and then this can result in uh, you all having such little time. Okay? So I think it's uh, better if you can have some prior preparation when it comes to daily classes. Mm -hmm. What was the driving force that motivated you to work hard in your studies? Yeah, so when it comes to the main driving force, I think uh, your meaning to motivation. Uh, I think uh, the best motivation in any case is uh, self-motivation because uh, I think is we have a lot of uh, support right from our parents, from our friends, right? And uh, I think uh, the best thing for us to do is that the, the realization here is that we uh, have left all of that at home and we've come here for one specific goal. It's pretty clear for everyone that it's to uh, learn the subject of medicine and uh, we know that as future doctors that this is not a very uh, simple task. It's not like those other subjects where you just get to sit at a desk all day, right? So this is a very practical subject and it's uh, uh, at the end of this degree, uh, a human's life will be in your hands. So and I think that is more serious enough to understand that this is a, a really serious thing and you need to take this thing seriously and everything that you learn is going to one day apply into uh, saving a life. So I think uh, that to me I think is uh, very motivating and uh, and it's very rewarding too like you know all the insomnia all the sleepless nights and all that right I think it's uh, going to amount to something in the future mm -hmm. so I think that would be the main driving force not just for me but I think for everyone. Speaking of sleepless nights I'm sure you have dealt with pressure and stress mm -hmm. can you tell us how you did it? Uh, well, my main go-to uh, way of stress relieving is try to forget everything about the studies at all. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, like uh, I personally am into watching a lot of movies, a lot of uh, TV series, a lot of games, even right on the computer. So I think that uh, this is a good avenue because I personally uh, do not participate in a lot of extracurricular activities here. But I find that those are some avenues in which I can like... Uh, for a moment at least forget that life is a bit stress-free, right? And I personally love a lot of music and I think that it is also another uh, portal for me to get uh, stress relieved at least for a few hours, to forget that I'm a medical student for a while and then, you know, all that responsibility with studies and exams and I think that it's good. And uh, when I mean by sleepless nights, it's not to deteriorate your health because I think that uh, no matter what, our health is the most important thing and... Uh, we don't have to sacrifice that, I mean, like, not to the point where it becomes a, we ourselves become a patient in the end, so I don't think that is most important, so I think, yes, in this way, this is uh, quite good. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a rundown of your daily schedule? Okay, so, uh, we're talking about fourth year, things are a bit more relaxed, but I'll talk about third year, which is, I think, what people want to know most, right? So, uh, since third year is very hectic, well, at the beginning, you don't feel the pressure much because, uh, uh, well, just like any semester, it's the, the heat begins when the exams come. So, when you talk about a daily schedule, of course, it's uh, the typical eat, sleep, repeat and study cycle. So, my daily schedule would be like, you know, going to classes and coming back. And like I mentioned previously, there will be a few hours for me or maybe, I wouldn't say a few hours, but at least uh, maybe four to five hours of uh, some time for myself. Which, okay, that's plenty. Right, which is uh, which includes uh, a sleep for at least few hours, right? and then maybe some music, maybe some games, or maybe some movies. And then after that, maybe at around like if it's for daily classes, uh, really there is no much pressure because 
either like i said i have maybe gone through this previously or maybe like the content is not so difficult because it's a matter of uh, connecting the dots because most of these subjects they're like interconnected although they're divided uh, so i think uh, then yeah maybe a few hours of study and uh, to me i value my sleep a lot and i think that uh, everyone should value their sleep because it's no point in becoming like a study machine because doing that it's gonna give you good grades good results on your exams but in the future you're gonna end up with uh, some problem that you have to spend all that money for because already we are spending so much here right nothing here is for free so i think that uh, spending some time for yourself and getting that is important well afterwards yes at least uh, by 12 12:30 that would be my cut off time right and after that uh, i i'm not the sort of person to get up in the morning and study because it's i sleep through my alarms so <laughs> studying is not going to get me up in the morning so that's the best thing to do is to try and prepare for it beforehand as well and then after that it's just another cycle actually it's just another cycle it keeps going on and on but for third year yeah it was a bit too stressful but uh, i'm glad that it's kind of over but i'm hoping that the pressure continues because it motivates to people to study actually mm-hmm. rather than thinking that everything is done with the dia and then uh, from the uh, continuing years it's going to be so relaxed i yeah. don't think that's a good mindset to be honest mm-hmm. most students believe that pharmacology in third year is a difficult subject um yet you did a brilliant job um can you tell us how you studied pharmacology and your study tips and when do you usually start preparing for an exam okay so uh, pharmacology yes it's true that it is actually a hard subject and i think the reason for this is because it's a new subject and uh, in your previous years i think in the first and second years such a subject did not exist or at least something that goes close to it may be biochemistry but uh, the real essence of the subject is newly introduced to us so uh, my personal advice to start studying for an exam it could be a mini exam it could be your final exam uh, is to start from day one itself which i mean what i mean by this is that uh, when we start studying for pharmacology try to start studying everything very seriously from day one because uh, it's like learning a new skill for example right when we are children we don't know how to walk and every day it's a bit of a struggle but then if you put in the work for it it's like learning a new skill for example playing the piano because uh, it's the same with pharmacology because uh, these concepts are new to us and uh, the most difficult thing is to learn these drug names i suppose because they sound really outlandish sometimes and uh, mechanisms and all this it's difficult to cram such a subject in the last moment and uh, this is why i personally feel that uh, no matter if it's a mini exam or if it's a final exam the best way to prepare for such a thing is to uh, start from day one really because everything will somehow add up to something bigger in the end and uh, in the final exams it will be just a revision for you rather than just uh, going through and i think that the details provided in the university book is more than enough for daily classes if you want to supplement yourself you can maybe watch videos or read any other books but i think it's uh, better to just focus on what's right in front of you and uh, this way i think it's going to be quite successful um speaking of 100% do you should give your best every single day well uh, there are days there are ups and downs like uh, i guess no one is really perfect and uh, in this case what i would say by giving my 100% is that uh, of course uh, i would try my best to uh, understand the concept because i think uh, the biggest mistake in medical school is when everyone tries to memorize everything and uh, there are so many textbooks and people will be like i need to know every single point in this book is not in my opinion is not the essence of studying medicine and i think it's more important to understand what you study rather than just uh, by heart in everything because uh, putting some uh, some information in your mind and then just going and repeating it to your sir is not going to be the best option for you especially like i mentioned before this is not a very easy going uh, job that you're going to do in the future so yes of course my daily uh, when it comes to daily classes my uh, main goal is to try and understand what the class is for like for example so when it comes to any subject i would like to try to grasp at least not the entire lesson because there are days where i would not personally go through 100% nor even 50% but then if i at least am confident in what sort of thing the sir is expecting from me 
that way i think i would say that uh, i have not had days with uh, 100% knowledge but uh, yes but i try somehow try to compensate with uh, whatever i know or whatever i can grasp at the moment mm -hmm. your answers were very well detailed i'm sure many students will appreciate it thank you so much for coming thank you. A higher number of top performers have come from year 4 than any other year. Let's look at their names. Vijay Singh Tabita Tamira, Elvis Virasinghe Chamodi Ahinsa, Dear Prince Angelo Duvan, Nazim Ahmed Miraj, Muhammad Al Sabri, Soha Al Fatima, Peer Pula Vidunala Gedara, Zakia Ganim Zamzam, Mantripala Sanuri Nimaya, Peeris Gunatilika Habara Gumaralalage Danika Domini, Virakun Virakun Mudian Selage Prasangi Mahishika ദമുനുപുല പതിരനലാകെ ആറലിയ ശലിക ബന്ധാര ദി ആൽവിസ് സനിവിരാത്ന അലക്സാണ്ടർ മനീഷ ഗൽഗിപിറ്റിയ ഹിമർഷി കാവ്യ മൊഹോട്ടി ഗദര വിരാക്കോൻ മുദിയൻസലാകെ വർഷ പ്രിയദർശിനി കരുണാധിക വിജേന്ദ്ര ഗംലജ്ഞ മനീഷ സനലി മൊറായസ് മൊഹമ്മദ് നലീം ഫാത്തിമ റിസ്മിയ അമർസിംഗ് ആറാച്ചികെ ബുദ്ധിനി നിപോനിക ബണ്ടാര ജയസുന്ദര മുദിയൻസലാകെ ബണ്ടാര മറിനി എപ്പിറ്റ് അത്തോടുകെ ദിമുത്തു ചാനക അത്തോട് വത്തകെ സകുണിക കവിന്ദി ജയസിംഗ ഭവാന്യ റനിന്ദി ഗലിസ പിറ്റിയകെ സച്ചിന്തന ഉപമാലി ജയതിസ്സ കാലാഞ്ചി മഹദുരകെ നിപുണു ഗയാൻ പുഷ്പകുമാര കുലത്തുങ്ക ലഹിറു വിദുഷാൻ സെന്തിൽ വേലവർ മയൂറത്തി സീനുൽ അബ്ദുൽ അഹമ്മദ് അഫ്സാൽ കറവിട്ട വിദനലകെ റഷാനി നവിന്ദിക മൊഹമ്മദ് സൊഹേൽ ജവറിയ ഹീൻ തുടവകെ സസിന്ദ് ഉദാര കരുണ തിലക് Please welcome Ahmed Miraj. Hi Miraj. Hi. Um can you please tell us what qualities would you describe yourself? I would describe myself as a very extroverted, fun-loving person. Um quite talkative. Um yeah, I think I would describe myself as a very outgoing people person in short. And in relation to studies? In relation to studies, I believe consistency is key so i don't study for a long time but for daily classes i prepare for the amount that's necessary but i also believe that you know sleeping getting your right amount of sleep and exercise and diet is also super important it's a multifactorial thing right yeah um what's your favorite study tip um a little bit every day a little bit goes a long way so a little bit of preparation each day amounts to more than just cramming it in one go so that would be what i would suggest to anyone If you do it now for every single class you study the workload will be less yeah so it makes it easier um minash could you please uh, briefly describe us how you get ready for daily class work well i like to go through the material with a lot of different sources and i try to have a system at least to make it short because other than what is high efficiency with a little bit of time so especially when it comes to medicine it's very schematic and it's very concrete there is no mystery that's there because you know exactly how you're supposed to study you have to study the body you have to study diagnosis and any treatment so with that guidelines i just go for the absolute essentials and uh, yeah the rest i pick up in class as well because you can learn a lot from your groupmates and from teachers as well yeah so when finals are coming up how uh, how early would you start for the finals or do you just keep it to the last minute and cram Funny question because I actually plan on starting today for the finals um, because uh, I like to do it very relaxed and very casually. So I think three weeks is a good time to practice. I have four finals coming up, and uh, I will give them equal preference. There is no subject that I put over the other, but I plan to start today, and I really hope the plan works because I actually planned to start yesterday, but I postponed that today. But generally, about two weeks before, I will definitely have started for me. Mm -hmm. Um is there any study method you have adopted? The study method none in particular. I just like to read it and I like to watch videos through videos for sure. Especially if it's a disease I would like to watch a medical take on it and also a patient's take because you never understand the symptoms as well as someone who actually has the disease, right? Yeah. So when a patient complains like oh uh, it's painful, you know that it's you know that that's a complaint that you should Same for the exam as well because that's the real patient complaint. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Miraj, for your very detailed answers, oh, and also thank you for joining us today. It's all my pleasure. Thank you so much. Please welcome Tabitha Tamla. 
Hi, you have an average score of greater than 9.6. Wow, congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. So please tell us, um, what is the most difficult subject in fourth year in your opinion? What's your advice on using that subject? So first of all, thank you for having me here, Shahani. So, uh, so I think about this question, it depends on your own perspective as well as your year of study. So something I find difficult and hard might be found by another person as very easy and the vice versa can happen. So I think it depends on your own perspective and I would the advice I would give you is that do not listen to what anybody says. You just trust in yourself. You think I can do it and then take small steps maybe whatever you can to like reach the goal and do hard work and I'm sure you will push you will be pushed to achieve that. Somehow you will reach it. So that is what I would like to say. Mm -hmm. That's that's really nice advice. So you never struggled in top anatomy? Uh, I struggled. It was very hard, uh, like with the surgeries and you can't see anything, like you don't deal with real patients. Actually, it's just the book and your imagination and maybe some pictures. So I struggled, but by what I did was I studied in bits and pieces whenever I had time. I like, that is what I told you, like do not listen to anybody. Try to do something you can do and somehow you'll reach there. So hard work is the key to anything, I would say. Mm -hmm. Surely there must be some kind of underlying motivation that makes you want to commit to this much hard work. What is it? Yeah, so uh, I think motivation helps you to keep going. So my thing is like if I don't have motivation, I just sleep somewhere. So my motivation is the millions of money our parents have spent on us. I think we should make some use of it. Mm -hmm. So my driving force and motivation would be my parents. So that. Um, first brings me the motivation to do hard work. So, on a daily basis, yes. right? Yeah. Could you please describe our scientifical day? Yeah, so my day is nothing close to ideal. It's a normal day like most of yours. Like I go to classes, come back and then eat. I like eating, so I eat. Then I have a me time where I sleep, I watch some YouTube videos, or I uh, call, make phone calls and stuff. But every day I make sure that before night, at least before having the dinner, I try to study at least three hours. So that would, that is my goal even now. So I try my best to study at least for continuous three hours before dinner. And late after, I try my maximum to study until 12. Sleep is essential for me and by 12, I get into bed. It doesn't matter whether I am feeling sleepy or not. I just get into bed, close lights, close my eyes. So that's my day and I repeat it again and again. Mm -hmm. So that is it. So sleep, eat, study. Do you have a favorite study method or tip? Yeah, so each and every person has their own perspective of studying. So what I do might not be felt as right by other person. So yeah. some might find it boring, but what I try to do is I read. I read a lot. Like if you take one topic, if the topic has one paragraph, I try to read it twice or thrice. And that is how I study and I try to take the important points maybe onto a paper. Reading, reading is the best method of studying for me and maybe some YouTube videos when I don't understand stuff. So that is what helps me do it. Mm -hmm. So, Davita Tamara, you are the first student, first Sri Lankan student of Grodno State Medical University who appeared on the honor board. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell us, how did you reach there? Yeah, so it was just pure hard work. So first time when I moved into the university, I was not even a student then. We walked in with our agent and I saw the honor board and our agent was like the best students are here and I was like, mm, I should be there someday so I got the motivation then and then after that I started working. It was not always great days, not great scores but uh, not good marks in class every day, it was not like that but I just had a goal like as I told you before I need something to keep me going so at that point of time what kept me going is was I, I needed to be in the honor board somehow so for that I studied in pieces and bits and that's how I was, uh, I came to the corner board. So it was again, I would say hard work and a little bit of motivation. Um, what do you think is the criteria to get there? Uh, the criteria to get there is to be the first in, I mean first in your batch in every exam conducted. So I mean the first semester exam if you are the first, again the second semester exam if you are the first. So I was able to be the first consecutively for six to seven semesters. And wow. That is how I came there. 
Are you happy with your school right now? Yes. Or do you have any goal you're still aiming for? So I'm happy with that. Now, as I'm the fifth year, my current goal is to like treat real patients, be a good doctor, be kind to them, smile at them, or do something I could do. So right now, my goal is to be a practical doctor and practically, so that is it. Um, Tabitha, I'm sure there must have been days where you have been very stressed. Can you tell us how you handle stress and yeah. pressure? So, yeah, so I'm a Christian basically, so I believe that everything is from God and stuff. So, my number one way of relieving stress is actually praying. Uh -huh. People <laughs> might find it funny, but... No, I, it's, it's really nice. I actually do pray a lot. So, I think if I have stress and if I talk to Jesus, like, it will be good. It will be okay. Mm -hmm. So, that is my number one uh, way of relieving stress. And the second is I talk to my parents and my sisters and my friends. And that is how I relieve stress and I sleep. So I these sleep. are the methods to relieve stress. Number one method would be praying. So that is Yeah, that it gets you going. Yes. That's okay. That's lovely. Tabitha, please tell us how do we deal with distractions? Do you constantly check up on your phone too like most students? Yes, I do. Most of the time I do, I go to Insta. And if I go to Insta, I spend 20, 30 good amount of time there. So what I do is most of the time when I'm like focused to study, what I do is I switch off the phone maybe leave it in the room and come to the study room. Most of the time when I study, I come to the study room because when I'm in my own room, what I do is I sleep, I go to Insta, I Google the stuff, I do things on YouTube. So what I do is I leave my phone aside and then when I study, I only study. And if I'm only phone, it is for later. So it is how I have been managing stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you think there is a subject in which you discovered a really good way to study and that had you to ease your, ease your exams and tests? Would yeah. you like to share it with us? Yeah, I would say internal medicine. So what happened was in internal medicine we were taught ECTs. So it was very hard for people and it was hard for me as well. My first ECG I got just two. So it was not oh. good. So then what I thought was... So, that is the thing, it is, nothing is impossible, so what I did was, I used to make small notes and then I used to go and ask the teacher. The teacher was really good, she explained and st uh, stuff and then what I started doing is, I started doing more and more ECGs. Every time maybe Google search an ECG from internet or somewhere else and do ECGs, I kept on doing it. And at one point I was able to ace it and I started teaching people ECGs, so mm -hmm. that is That's how I like. So now if you show me an ECG, I'm like... By a glance, I'm able to see what this is, but the first marks for my ECG was just two. So huh. it's like that. But at least you reach far right now. Yes. Could you please tell us how do you juggle your studies with chores? Because some of the students were curious to know this. Some chores can actually stress the students out to the point that they just can't study. You're what about you? The household, household chores, okay. Okay. washing and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, now in fifth year it's pretty chill because it's just cycles and we don't do much so then it was pretty chill even in fourth year it was cycles so it's, it was pretty much uh, chill me and my roommates cook we together we chill and then we study just like that but when we were in the third year and stuff it was really distracting so what we used to do was we used to cook for two three days in advance refrigerate it and then eat it wash clothes on friday maybe so it was it was very hard, it is, but now with time we got used to it. You get used to it and you get to learn to multitask, yeah. But it was hard, it was hard. It was hard. So, thank you so much, Tabitha. And thank also, you. thank you for being the first Sri Lankan student. Thank you so get much, Charlie. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. It is a remarkable quality to be able to perform well in the face of numerous responsibilities and obligations. We anticipate that most students will learn something from this interview that will help them improve their performances. I am Shani Rajshaykran signing out.